Number eight, a professional application. A car moving at 10 meters per second crashes into a tree and stops in 0.26 seconds. Calculate the force the seatbelt exerts on a passenger in the car to bring him to a halt. The mass of the passenger is 70 kilograms. All right, uh, so in this problem, right, we're asked to calculate force. We're given a time in which the momentum of this person changes. So therefore, I'm thinking about using this formula up here on the right-hand side. Okay, it says that the change in momentum of an object, oops, the change in momentum of an object will equal the force applied over the time the change in time in which it's applied. So if I want to find the force, all I have to simply do is divide out the change in time, right? So here it tells us that the force is equal to the change in the uh, momentum divided by the change in that particular time. All right, so now let's expand the momentum, all right? So the force here applied will be equal to the, uh, whoops, the mass of the passenger multiplied by his final velocity minus the mass of the passenger multiplied by his initial velocity all over the change in time, which they just told us a single time value, so I'm assuming that right, the clock started at zero and ended at 0.26 seconds. So now, uh, do we know everything we need to know here? And we do, right? So uh, let's just plug everything on in. So the mass, actually, you know what? I can simplify this thing a little more, right? I can bring out the mass term, all right? So the force is equal to then the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time. And you should be noticing now, anytime I'm talking about change in momentum, I can simply rewrite that as the mass, whoops, the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus, minus the initial velocity. Okay, so I'm probably gonna just start doing this shortcut instead of deriving it the whole time in future videos. So, um, all right, so now let's simply plug in the values. So the mass of the passenger was 70 kilograms. The final velocity was zero, right? He crashed, boom, zero. So now um, it, its initial velocity was 10 meters per second. All right, so plug that in. And the time it took to come to the stop was 0.26 seconds. Okay, so let's calculate the force here. So the force now needed to bring the car to rest is going to be 70 times... Uh, essentially negative 10, right, divided by 0.26. And it comes out to be uh, negative, hold on one second, negative 2.69 times 10 raised to the 1, 2, 3. 3. Okay. And that is the force. Oops, don't forget to put the unit there. It's in terms of uh, Newtons. And it said calculate the force. Yeah, the seatbelt exerts on a passenger uh, to bring him to a halt. So it's going to be the same thing, right? I mean, this is the force that the car experiences, but again, it's also going to be the same uh, force that the uh, seatbelt um, uh, imparts to the person, okay? And the negative sign kind of just indicates a uh, direction, right? If you're thinking about, you know, a car moving, all right, to the right-handed side, and here's the passenger in the car, and here's the seatbelt, okay? And all of a sudden, the car, you know, crashes into something, so the passenger is going to want to, his momentum is going to continue taking him forward, but the seatbelt is going to apply a force in this direction to the passenger so that he doesn't fly through the windshield. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.